Hi there, this is Jonathan Ginsberg. I'd like to talk to you today about a situation where you may have earnings uh, that appear in your earnings record after your alleged onset date. And again, the example here would be, let's say that you're claiming you became disabled on April 3rd, uh, but you show earnings in May or June of that particular year, or maybe May, June, July, and August of that particular year. Well, you can assume and you can be assured that the judge is going to notice that you have earnings uh, in the years, in the months and years after you claim that you are disabled. Uh, and you're going to be asked about that. So let's go over the possible scenarios and what to do about them. Obviously, one would be uh, where you have unsuccessful work attempts. And that would mean that you have a situation where you tried to work for a couple of days, uh, maybe even a couple of weeks, anything less than three months, but you were not successful. My experience has been that's usually pretty good evidence. It shows that you're motivated to try to work, but that you were not successful in doing so. So I think if you have earnings after onset that represent uh, short-term work efforts that were not successful, that's something that you can explain away that the judge would certainly understand and it, will, it should not hurt you. Second possibility would be uh, where you uh, continue to receive pay, but you physically were not at the work site. So, for example, uh, let's say that you, for whatever reason, you stopped working on uh, April 3rd or April 4th, but you continue to get paid through June. Maybe you had some sort of a, a, a long-term plan uh, based on a contract or you were getting long-term disability insurance. In that situation, you want to really emphasize to the judge that you were not physically at the work site, you were not physically doing the work, even though you were getting paid. And in that situation, the judge will probably find uh, that you became disabled on the last time you were physically able to do the work. Now, what about the third scenario, and that would be where you move from full-time work to part-time work. So again, for example, uh, take a situation perhaps where you're working in an office, uh, you're working eight hours a day, and then because of uh, physical, mental health issues, uh, you move from eight hours a day to six hours a day, then to four hours and maybe two hours, something like that. And that can happen if you've been in a, a job for a long period of time. And my experience has been that most judges will will allow you to claim that your move from full-time to part-time work does not equal substantial gainful activity, meaning that the, the months or, or weeks you were at part-time work is not considered full-time work, is not considered substantial activity, but really you're only able to use a couple of months of that. In other words, you can't, in my experience at least, uh, you cannot try to claim that the last eight or nine months of part-time work were really not substantial work. The judge will probably conclude that uh, that you possibly could have worked an easier job full-time. So I think if you're trying to say that the last couple of months you went from full-time to part-time, that's not SGA or competitive level work. Uh, you can probably push that, but beyond a couple of months of that, it's going to be very, very difficult. Realize the judges are under a lot of pressure to only approve uh, cases where the disability is very clear. And when you're talking about part-time work, uh, things get a little bit muddy. And, and again, uh, most judges, my experience has been, will find that if you could do part-time work uh, for, for, for a certain number of hours in a day, then you could possibly do full-time work uh, and easier type of job. That's, again, what, what the judges typically would conclude. So that's how you deal with earnings after onset. Again, be prepared to explain it. Make sure to talk to your lawyer about looking at your earnings record to make sure that you know you're going to have this issue and, again, prepare for it. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, I'm Jonathan Ginsberg. Any questions, please let me know.